Hi everybody, this is Michael, and today I'm showing you a, a cool little tool that I built in Excel. Um, time studies are a really important part of what industrial engineers and Lean Six Sigma professionals do, and I'm sure there's a litany of other um, occupations that really rely on a good current state analysis to make decisions and, and kind of figure out what you need to do to improve an operation. And one of the difficulties I've had in the past is that time studies are just very cumbersome to do. They're, of course, time consuming, uh, but also we don't have a lot of tools that are conducive to uh, recording observations as you're uh, observing them on a Gemba walk or, or workspace or what have you. So in Excel, I built this little tool here that has helped me uh, facilitate time studies much more um, effectively and efficiently. So how this tool works, I'm just going to walk through a short demo, is I click this button that says begin time study. And when I do, a couple tabs are produced down here. This is kind of a bunch of minutia. A lot of work is going to automatically be generated there. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have a nice canned uh, generated report where we can immediately, after the conclusion of a time study, immediately see the results of the time study. So how this works is it starts with just basic uh, project parameters. So in this case, I'll say project name is my demo project. Analyst name is Michael. And the department name will say is um, department one. And the workstation will call it workstation one. The next is I'm giving us two units to measure in, either minutes or seconds. Since this is just a short demo, I'm going to put it in seconds. Um, so that each uh, <laughs> each work activity is uh, is recorded a little bit more quickly. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to enter in all the work activities that we expect to do or we expect to observe when we go out and do the time study. This is a critical part of a, t of a good time study is you want to be familiar with the work that, that you're going to be observing before you even go out there. It doesn't make any sense to go out there and try to figure out what the person is doing and then capture the time that it's taking them to do that. Uh, you want to be very comfortable with saying that, yes, that's what I'm observing and it corresponds to this work, uh, work activity or event that I expected to see. Um, so what I have here is just kind of a hierarchy where we're starting with activity type, which is kind of like a big uh, a big bucket. And in this case, I'm going to have two for this demo. I'm going to have production and break. One's going to be value added. The other one's going to be not value added. Uh, the activity group is kind of that next level down in the hierarchy. And in this case, I'll say prefabrication is my act work activity group. And I'll have another one that says assembly and then another one that says quality check. And then finally, the activity description. This is actually the work element that you're observing at the time. And here, I'll just put in make material one, something generic for our demo purposes. Uh, and then finally, I'm having a distinction between value added and non-value added. And I'll say that this activity is value added. Next, what I want to do is hit add activity. And notice that it doesn't delete everything. So that way, if you have multiple um, work elements in this activity group in this type, you don't have to keep typing in production or prefab. You can just keep putting in um, the activity work element or description. So I'm just going to be adding uh, two more for prefab. Make material two and make material three. They're both value added. And now I'm going to have uh, a different work group. We'll call it assembly. And then we will say assemble stage one and assemble stage two. And then finally, for the last activity group in the production type, we'll call it quality inspect. And there we will have uh, inspect product as a work activity. And then maybe reject and then maybe accept. And uh, I'm putting these as value added. Uh, there's probably a, a good healthy debate on whether or not quality inspection is actually value added or non-value added. Um, but just for our purposes here, I'm leaving them as value added. Uh, and then finally, we're going to go to a different work type. And this one is we're going to call break. And I'm putting in parentheses that it's the type. And then in the work group, 
I'll say that it's also break. And then the activity description is, hey, this is a scheduled 15 minute break. That is non-value added. So we want to um, change it from the value added to non-value added. And then we'll have an unscheduled break. And then finally, maybe a different activity group, we'll call it lunch, lunch break. And let's say add activity. Let's say um, I'm finished here. If I hit finish, it's not going to let me um, cancel. It says you have unsubmitted data in this box. Please add activity or ensure data is recorded. Um, <clears throat> what this means essentially is I haven't completely, I haven't fully completed the, this field here. And so it's a fail safe, a nice little fail safe um, in this box. All you have to do is hit clear all. And now it's going to say nothing's missing. I've got all the activities I needed. Let's go ahead and hit finish. Once it's finished uh, in this time study workspace here, all of these work elements that I just recorded, uh, they have different attributes associated, value added, non-value added, that type of thing. Um, but these are all the work activities that I entered in. And essentially all I have to do is hit start for, to start my time study. And then I'm just going to record um, what I observe on the Gemba, on, on the workspace. So uh, what it's doing is it's starting and it's giving me a, a, a stopwatch. It's going on and on and on. And then when I see that something is, is completed, that's when I say, yes, okay, it's been completed. Um, a lot of people, what they'll try to do is anticipate what's happening, what's going to happen next in a time study. And it's not something that I prefer. Uh, because you, you often get it wrong. You often um, don't anticipate it correctly. So by putting just the stop button or the start button here, I start the timer and now I, all I have to do is record what I just saw. Um, so in this case, as I'm speaking over this, I'm clicking buttons and what I'm saying is, okay, I just saw an unscheduled break and now I hit unset scheduled break. Uh, I just saw a lunch break and we'll do these a little bit faster. Now let's say my time study is complete. I'm done with my time study. All I have to do is hit the end button. It says, are you sure? Are you really sure you want to end it? And yes, I am. Um, and it says time study complete. What I've done, what this raw, raw tab is, is it's all of the information that I just recorded. It's brought over the attributes that are associated uh, with each of the work elements. And of course, I've got my start time right here. And then it's taking the time between these events. In this case, 5 seconds, 16 seconds, 18 seconds. Uh, and what it's doing is it's just capturing this. Uh, and this is all the raw data that you, that you would need to generate a report. And this is kind of um, the, the result of your time study. But we want something a little bit prettier than that. So if we hit this generate report uh, button here, and I'm just going to select every one to show you what the, the whole canned report looks like. But we have all types of reports. And as you'll see in a moment, um, the bar charts represent frequency of how often a uh, how often a work activity occurred or a group occurred or a type occurred. And then also some of the pie charts, which represent more of the time component. So I hit create report. It generates fairly quickly. It is producing a lot of charts for me now. And you can see here that I've got this nice canned report. It's formatted pretty well for printing purposes uh, as well. And what we have here is a Pareto report, which just shows time in seconds in a bar chart format, and then the cumulative time associated with that work element. In this case here, we also have it based on the, uh, the description. So the average duration, um, at assembly stage one took the longest on average versus uh, other materials. And what we also see is different value added analysis in the pie chart. So um, the pie chart analysis is really um, two types. You've got the value added, which is um, that, I, I guess it's the, uh, the field that we filled out here when we did our work elements, value added, non-value added, and we only denoted um, that our breaks were non-value added. And then jumping over, where's my report? Jumping back over to the report. So we have that print out there. And then we also see a breakdown in terms of those uh, three hierarch hierarchy stages. The activity itself, 
the group, which is the next level up, and then the type, which is that highest level. So you can see um, at different levels of hierarchy how it shakes out in terms of time. And then finally, going into the bar chart, this is what I was talking about with frequency, where it's the same thing. We're looking at it in terms of the uh, description or the activity itself, the group itself, or the type itself, in kind of that, that different level of hierarchy. And, and this gives it, you a really complete view of the time study because you, you now have the frequency or how often uh, different components are occurring. You have the time component, which is how long these, uh, these activities or groups or types uh, last for each time they occur. And then you've kind of got the breakdown of the value added, non-value added, which is very helpful. And then of course the Pareto analysis, which is, which is key to understanding the cumulative percentage against the time in seconds. So it's all here, it's all based in Excel. You don't need any extra programs or, or any applications. And I think it's a really robust tool to help people you know, who are doing time studies very frequently or it's an integral part of their work uh, to really just have a, a consistent and, and polished look at how they do time studies as well as a more accurate and consistent way to record and observe the, the activities that are out on the work floor. So if you're interested in learning more about this, please just uh, message me at the link below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Thank you.